Hi, Blade Angel here, and welcome back to another one of my videos about supercars that couldn't be. Today in this series, we'll be discussing the Trial Nemesis. Remember when I said that I would only talk about cars that I like? Well, I lied. I, I am not really a fan of the Nemesis, but regardless, it definitely is a supercar that was never built. So, it actually claims to be America's first hypercar. So, ooh, it's better than supercar. Now, that's not true. This title belongs, in my opinion, to the Saline S7 Twin Turbo. Some people say it belongs in Hennessy Venom GT. Some people call that a glorified kit car. I don't care. It definitely does not belong to this car. This car has a 9 liter twin turbo V8 engine with a mid engine layout with a horsepower output of 2000. Its torque is unknown. Now, you're probably wondering how the heck is its torque unknown if I just stated its horsepower numbers? Well, that's because this car is a shell car. It never made it into the prototype phase. It was never actually, a running model was never actually made. It supposedly has a top speed claim of 270 miles an hour plus with a 0 to 60 time of 2.8 seconds. It has an all wheel drive setup with a transmission of 8 speed manual sequential, so paddle shift basically. For an all wheel drive 2000 horsepower, 2.8 seconds is rather pathetic actually. The car must have weighed a lot. Speaking of which, the weight is unknown once again because it's a shell car and a running model was not made. But those numbers are piss poor, and I imagine it must have been heavy as crap if it achieved such, if it were to achieve such terrible numbers. It's obvious the CEO and the designers didn't really know that much about cars. Speaking of not knowing much about cars, that's further evidenced by the fact that car doesn't feature much cooling. So it has two front vents that cool the front wheels, and then two side vents that cool the rear wheels. The rear of the car does have some black mesh on it that is, I hope, is see through like you know th and that's gonna like be an outlet for air but if you look at the engine there's no intake and there's no outlet in the windows like which in my opinion is absurd you're not gonna cool a 2000 horsepower car if if there is no outlet or intake for air now now i'm browsing the website and obviously the model that is most talked about is the tron nemesis rr which supposedly cost 1.6 million with a special black ops edition that costs 1.98 million this car is quite the ripoff for 1.6 million car as its performance figures are okay for 1.6 million dollar cars yeah i can buy an aventador super veloce and get 2.8 seconds and i wouldn't get the same top speed but i'd get probably the same experience and a lot more a lot more beautifully designed car Speaking of which, this car doesn't have much carbon fiber, if not any. When you go to customize it, almost all the carbon fiber options are optional. What kind of $1.6 million car has optional carbon fiber? By the time a car is over a million dollars, it should be having a carbon fiber fetish. It should be filled with carbon fiber, and carbon fiber should just come standard with the car. It shouldn't be something you pay extra for when you already paid a whole $1.6 million for the dang thing. So, yeah... That's rather mind-blowing. I don't know how they thought that was a good business strategy or how they possibly hoped to stack up against the competition with something as piss-poor as lack of carbon fiber. Yes, it's an option, but like I said, you really shouldn't be paying extra when you're paying $1.6 million or $1.98 million for that matter. The car does have another model, which is the Nemesis GT. The Nemesis GT is their grand tour, and it's a convertible. Now, the thing with the Nemesis GT is it's... It's a load of crap. I mean, I really can't say anything else for it other than it's a load of crap. It's 0 to 60 time is 3.5 seconds. It has 1,400 horsepower. You know what it says almost 1,400 horsepower? The Koenigsegg 1-1. That car is a mega car, and it has 1,360 horsepower. So with 1,400 horsepower, this massive failure somehow only manages to achieve a 3.5 seconds 0 to 60 for rear-wheel drive setup, and I imagine it's only single-turboed instead of twin-turboed, hence the reason it has 600 less horsepower than the RR. You know what else can do those numbers? A Camaro ZL1. For a base price of $61,140, it can go 0-60 to 3.5 seconds with a 6-speed manual version, with only 650 horsepower, which is literally twice, twice, more than twice as less as the Nemesis GT has, and its top speed can probably be tuned up to 218 easily. It's also a rear-wheel drive, and it's also a V8, but it's a 6.2 liter supercharged V8. It's much smaller engine, and somehow it's faster. The Nemesis GT also costs 1.2 million, by the way. 1.2 million is a complete ripoff for something a Camaro ZL1 can already accomplish at 60 grand. You, speaking of, I guess, desperation and 
marketing failure. The website features the ability to customize your own car and even a tab that says to purchase the car. What? I mean, they openly advertise the price of the car too, which is, well, it's kind of strange actually. If you visit a lot of other supercar websites or hypercar websites, they don't openly advertise their prices. And that's normally found out through like people who do buy the car and do spread it through word of mouth. But like, for, if you go to Koenigsegg's website, they don't just have a tab that says like, oh, buy our car, customize one. Yay. Like, it's not that simple. It's an exclusive, very exclusive process, and very special individuals have to be selected to get hold of the process. But the fact that it's just an openly available thing that a browser, someone just browsing by can access is almost shows a lack of confidence or really kind of a poserish feel. Like, that just seems so sketch to me. Like, no, no real hypercar, supercar company would do something like that. Now, this car is featured in a few, two games, being Asphalt 8 and CSR Racing. Uh, I'm glad that all they are all they are shell cars, and they'll, all they'll ever be are shell cars, is they'll never go into production. Now, some of you Asphalt 8 fans are probably triggered by me right now, saying, How dare you talk trash about my waifu? This is the best car in the game. It's such a good car. It will be even greater in real life, and you'll eat your own words. That's not going to happen. So, unfortunately, this car will probably never be produced. I don't know why I said unfortunately. I'm probably gl glad. But check out a video by Solomon Drin explaining what had happened with him and his experiences with this company, Tryon. I'm not going to explain much detail it because I don't want to take views away from his video. But you'll be surprised at the, what they went to and what level they stooped down to in order to try to, I guess, find some way to build the nemesis. So definitely go check his video out. Other than that, thank you for watching and comment down below any car that you'd like to see me make a video about because the, for the next video, I'm probably going to cover the Ford GT90, but I do take requests if there's a supercar that you'd like to hear me talk about. That, of course, was not produced. I will make probably another series for other rare supercars that have been produced, but that's a series for another time. Until then, thank you for watching. Blade Angel out.